Hey, hi friends, this is Bakapa. In the previous tutorial, I have discussed how to install a new main tool and then I have discussed how to execute the Postman collections from the command prompt. Then next I have discussed how to generate the new main HTML report. And then finally, I have discussed how to generate the new main advanced HTML report after executing the collections from the command prompt. In this chapter 5 of ABA testing tutorial, I will discuss how to create the patch API request. Then I will discuss the couple of interview questions on Postman API testing. So we will discuss what are the key differences between the put API request and patch API request. And then I will discuss what is the difference between post API request and patch API request. Then next I will discuss what are the key difference between the put API request and the post API request. Finally, I will discuss how to verify the JSON schema. So we, before we go ahead and create the patch API request, I will discuss the interview questions. So let's talk about the first, what is the difference between put API request and the patch API request. In case of put API request, we will use the type of method as a put. In case of patch API request, we will use the type of method as the patch. In case of put, so this technique will be used for modifying the resource in the server when client sends the data to the server where all the data will be replaced in case of patch api request so this is also one of the technique of modifying the resource in the application server when client sends the partial partial data and that will be updated without replacing the whole data in the application server and in case of put so this put request consumes the more bandwidth but patch request consumes the less bandwidth because in case of put api request we will be sending the whole data in case of patch api request we will send the partial request body so that's all about the put api request and the patch api request difference and let's move on to the next topic that is the, what is the difference between post api request and the patch api request in case of post api request we will use the type of method is a post and in case of patch api request we will use the type of method is patch so post in this in the case of post we will use this particular post method to create the new resource in the application server but in case of patch so patch api request will be used when we are modifying the resource in the server where client sends the partial data to the application server only that partial data will be updated without replacing the whole data in the application server so that's all about the difference between post api request and the patch api request so let's move on to the what is the difference between put api request and the post api request in case of put api request we will use the type of method is put in case of post api request we will use the type of method is a post so put api request will be used to modify the resource in the server and there we will specify the whole data and that data will be updated in the server application server so mainly we will pass everything whatever the data is there for any specific resource that whole res that specific resource will resource data will be updated with the request body but in case of post we will use this particular post method to create the new resource in the server now let's discuss what is patch api request and how to create the patch api request so let me define what is patch api request once again so patch api request is one of the type of api request and this patch api request will be used to modify the resource in the application server when client sends the partial data to the server only that partial data will be updated in the server without replacing the whole data in the application server so here i will use the update booking api and i will create the duplicate of this api request and i will rename this request as partial update booking. so that's it and after that i will specify the type of method is patch here so that's it and i will come to the body now that's the request body so as i said in the definition 
So we will be mentioning the only pars partial data. So client will be sending the partial data to the application server, right? So here I will remove all the fields here except the first name and last name. So that's it. So if you look at here, so we are trying to pass the only first name and the last name. So here I'll specify the first name as Postman and I will specify the last name as Tutorial. So that's it. So if you look at this particular API request, that is a patch API request and it is got updated, uh, updated with the patch and we have specified the partial update booking as the request name. So let's create the new booking first and we'll start updating the one of the booking partially. So we have created, so we got the booking ID here and let's read the booking details. And if you look at here, the first name is testers and the last name is stock. So let's execute the token generator. So this is the concept we are using here. That's a GWT. So we, that is nothing but JSON web token. We are generating the web token. And after generating this web token, we are using this token in the partial update booking API request headers. If you look at here, so we are using that particular token. So let's generate the GWT and we will execute the partial update booking API now. So if you look at here, the first name is updated with the postman and last name is updated, updated with the tutorial. So let's verify by going to the get booking details here. And if you look at here, first name is updated with the postman and also last name is updated with the tutorial and rest of the details are same. So we have updated the only specific details that's partially we have updated in this whole particular resource details, right? So let's try to update only the first name. So now I will update, I will add the, the request body. I will specify the only first name. So you can specify only one field also. Here I will specify the first name as AP test. So that's it. So let's create the new booking again. So this time it has to update only the first name. So booking, we got the booking ID and let's verify the booking details. And we got the details. So let's generate the token that is JSON web token and we got the token and let's execute the patch api request so we have specified the only first name as api testing so only first name should be updated with the api testing and rest of the details should be as is and if you look at this one response we got the 200 status code also first name is got updated with the api testing let's verify in the get api call so if you look at here only the first name got updated. So this is how you can create the patch API request in the Postman while testing the APIs. Now let's discuss how to perform the JSON schema validation. So before we go ahead and verify the JSON schema, so let's understand what is schema validation. So I will create the one new booking here. Then we will read the booking details by calling to the get API call. So if you look at the couple of fields and respective values, first one is first name, last name, and also the additional names. If you look at the respective values, all the fields, all three fields are accepting that the data in the form of only string, right? So in these places, if we are getting the different type of data, for example, we may get the integer data or we may get the Boolean data. So in those cases, our test script will get failed. So this is the, this is nothing but the JSON schema validation. For example, so there is another field called total price. So total price should contains the only the numeric data. So if application server is returning the string type of data, so automatically our test script will get failed. So let's perform this validation. And before we go ahead and perform this validation, we have to convert this particular response into the JSON schema. So you can convert any JSON object into the JSON schema 
by yourself or you can get the JSON schema from the development team. So in our case, we will convert this particular JSON object into the JSON schema by going to the google.com. Here you can search for convert JSON to JSON schema. So here you can go to the first link liquid.technologies. So this site is returning me the proper JSON schema for the JSON object. So simply you can paste the JSON object which you want to convert into the JSON schema and you can click on I'm not a ro robot. So simply you can select whatever the motorcycle. So let's verify it. Okay, done. So you can click on generate schema. And here we got the JSON schema for the respective JSON object. You can click on this icon to copy the JSON schema and you can come here in the. So here we will use the get booking details API. After creating the booking, we will verify the application server is returning the proper JSON schema for the any booking details. So here I will select the get booking details API and I will go to the test tab and I'll come down here. So here I'll create one constant variable as expected schema. So I'll paste it. So that's it. So you need to remove the first line. So this is the, this is not required. Only first line you need to remove it. So that's it. So this is our expected JSON schema. So I'll say expected json schema so that's it i'll come down so we have the expected json schema with us we have to write one simple test script by using the pm dot here i'll say test so here inside this we have to specify the test name so that's it so here i'll specify the test name as verify json schema so that's it. Then inside this test script, I will use the PM object. So this PM object contains the API request and the response. So here I will use the response dot two dot. So basically here I'm converting this to the JSON schema. So here I'm calling to the method called JSON schema. So we got the current API response JSON schema. And after that, we have to specify the or expected JSON schema which is there above here. So here I have specified the variable name of that, right? So currently our schema is matching with the our API response schema. So, so in this case it will get passed. This particular test will be passing. So let's execute the first create booking API. So we will create the booking and then we will execute the get booking details API. And if you look at the test results, our test got passed to verify JSON schema. So let's do some modifications in modifications in the expected JSON schema. So what I will do? So first name, we are getting the string. So I will specify it as an integer. So just we are experimenting right now. So we, so we are trying to fail it intentionally, right? So this time, our test will get failed with the reason first name is not matching, right? So let's execute this API now. And if you look at this failure reason, so our test got failed and then reason is first name should be integer. From the server, we are getting in the form of string only, right? So if a number of fields are mismatching, still it will returns all the field names over here in the error message. Let's try to fail another. So we'll intentionally modify the one of the attribute expected type of value. So I will specify total price as the string type. So we are expecting the string type of value for total price attribute, right? So let's execute the get API call. So if you look at this test results, 
out of six, five are fake, five are passed, and one is failed. And if you come down here, first name should be integer, and also it is showing the next field that is a total price should be string, right? From the application server, we are getting the integer value, right? So that's the reason. So if n number of fields are mismatching, which is coming from the application server, all the fields and respective details will be shown over here. So this is how we can perform the JSON schema validation in API testing using Postman.